Hello and welcome back to LDT 3135, Practical Project Management. I'm Dr. Tim Boylo, and in this module, our focus is on managing project risk. Along with scope management, project risk management processes are key to project planning and take place early in the product development life cycle to ensure that stakeholder expectations are met. Project risk management includes processes for analyzing project risk and planning mitigation strategies to handle risks, which may have negative impact to the project in terms of cost, timing, and quality. So let's get to it. Here's our agenda for this module. We'll cover a definition of risk management, talk a little bit about research on risk management, cover some risk management concepts, types of risks, the PMBOK project risk management processes, and we'll wrap up with next steps. We begin with a humorous look at risk management from the view of the project manager. In the assigned reading for this module, Watt uses the metaphor of a project manager standing on a cliff at the start of the project with the risk of falling off. In this example, there are four ways to handle a risk. The first is to avoid it. The best thing you can do with a risk is to avoid it. If you can prevent it from happening, it definitely won't hurt your project. The easiest way to avoid this risk is to walk away from the cliff, but that may not be an option on this project. The second is to mitigate. If you can't avoid the risk, you seek to mitigate it. This means taking some sort of action that will cause it to do as little damage to your project as possible. Third is to transfer the risk. An effective way to deal with a risk is to pay someone else to accept it for you. And the most common way to do this is to buy insurance. And then finally is to accept it. When you can't avoid, mitigate, or transfer a risk, then you have to accept it. But even when you accept a risk, at least you've looked at the alternatives and you know what will happen if it occurs. If you can't avoid the risk, then there's nothing you can do to reduce its impact, then sometimes accepting it may be your only choice. So let's provide a definition of risk management. Merriam Webster just, just defines risk as the possibility of loss or injury. Project risk is an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs, has an effect on at least one project objective. And risk management focuses on identifying and assessing the risk to the project and managing those risks in order to minimize the impact on the project. To summarize, risk management is not about eliminating risks, but rather it's about identifying, assessing, and effectively managing risk. A study was conducted on risk management practices in over 100 projects covering a variety of industries. The results of this study suggest the following about risk management practices. The first is that risk management is not widely used. Also, projects that were most likely to have a risk management plan were those that were perceived to be high risk. When risk management practices were applied to projects, they appeared to be positively related to the success of the project. The risk management approach influenced project schedules and cost goals However, it exerted less influence on product quality. And finally, good risk management increases the likelihood of a successful project. Looking at some important concepts related to risk management. Risk management is a creative process that involves identifying, evaluating, and mitigating the impact of the risk event. Risk management can be very formal with defined work processes or informal with no defined processes or methods. Formal risk management includes the use of checklists, brainstorming, and expert opinion. A risk breakdown structure can follow the work breakdown structure to identify risk by activity. And risk evaluation prioritizes the identified risk by the likelihood and the potential impact if the event should happen. Risk mitigation is the development and deployment of a plan to avoid, transfer, share, and reduce project risk. Contingency planning is the development of alternative plans 
to respond to the occurrence of a risk event. Before we turn our attention to PMI standards for project risk management, let's consider the types of risks. Well, first of all, all projects contain risks. Projects, by definition, are unique undertakings with varying degrees of complexity to deliver on user requirements. Risks must be managed in the context of project constraints and assumptions while responding to stakeholder expectations, which may often be conflicting and changing over the life of the project. Risk can exist at two levels within every project. Each of these are addressed within the processes covered by the PMBOK knowledge area for project risk management. Individual project risk is an uncertain event or condition that, if it occurs, has either a positive or negative effect on one or more project objectives. When we talk about positive risks, these are discovered opportunities that can lead to benefits such as reduced time or cost, improved performance, or reputation. Overall project risk represents the effect of uncertainty on the project as a whole, arising from all sources of uncertainty, including individual risk. Overall project risk is essentially the exposure of stakeholders to the implications of variations in project outcome, both positive and negative. Because risk can emerge throughout the project life cycle, project risk assessment and management processes should be reviewed during each project iteration or sprint. This also requires that project teams know what level of risk exposure is acceptable in pursuit of the project objectives. In Agile, projects make use of frequent reviews of incremental work products and cross-functional teams to accelerate knowledge sharing and to ensure that project risks are understood and managed in the context of the product backlog. According to the PMBOK, project quality management includes the processes for conducting risk management planning, identification, analysis, response planning, response implementation, and monitoring risk on a project. The overarching objectives for risk management are to increase the probability of and or impact of positive risk while decreasing the probability and or impact of negative risk in order to optimize the chances for project success. There are seven processes associated with the PMI standard for project risk management. Plan risk management is the process of defining how to conduct risk management activities for a project. Identify risk is the process of identifying individual project risk as well as sources of overall project risk and documenting their characteristics. Perform qualitative risk analysis is the process of prioritizing individual project risk for further analysis or action by assessing their probability of occurrence and impact on the project. Perform quantitative risk analysis is the process of numerically analyzing the combined effect of identified individual project risk and other sources of uncertainty on overall project objectives. Plan risk responses is the process of developing options, selecting strategies, and gaining agreement on actions to address overall project risk exposure, as well as to treat individual project risk. Implement risk responses is the process of implementing agreed upon risk response plans. And monitor risks is the ongoing process for monitoring and implementation of agreed upon risk response plans, tracking identified risks, identifying and analyzing new risks, and evaluating risk process effectiveness throughout the project lifecycle. Risk management is central to agile and adaptive product development environments. In order to manage risk, agile methods include a review of associated risks and mitigation plans when planning each sprint. This brings us to next steps. Be sure to work through all parts of the course materials for module 12, including all content, activities, and assignments. The only assignment for this module is the final sprint. 
Your focus should now be on completing the ebook project and presentation for the next class meeting. That brings us to the end of this presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Until next time, this is Dr. Tim Boylow, wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience, and I'll see you online.